All right, so who do we have here? We got uh, Lei at the top, Lei uh, as the uh, purple Protoss. Oh, by the way, this is the apparel Android 2v2. So it's a 2v2 version of the classic uh, uh, World Cyber Games map. Yeah, so this is um, this is a qualifying match. No, not a qualifying match. This is a this is the first round out of the losers bracket. So. So the, all the games that we cast so far were, were all from the winner's bracket. This is a loser's bracket match because yesterday Rancor and I fell to, to Nana and uh, Linden. So this is actually a loser's bracket match between Jiraiya, between myself and Rancor and uh, Proball and Laydig. So that's why the first game is on a different map. It's Paranoid Android. To me, this is like a Python. Like to me, it's yeah. just Python. Right. Um, plays very much like Python. Uh, I'm Terran in blue and my ally is Rancor, Zerg in red, and we're against uh, ZP, Zerg is Probal, um, yellow, and uh, Lei is Protoss, purple in the top position here. Right, so it is right versus left, and we'll notice that uh, the Zergs are very close to their opponents. Yeah. Which, you yeah. know, so the spawns really play, just like in Python, play a large part uh, in how the game turns out. Now, in Zerg Terran, this is Zerg Protoss, which spawns do you think you, like the Zerg Terran team wants to get uh, in a map like this? Uh, good question. So, I hate every single spawn on this map. I veto Python. I don't like Python. The reason for that is what you just said. When I have a Zerg next to me, that means that the muters are literally my backyard, which means I need to make turrets, and that if I make turrets, I have delayed everything else. So, I don't like this map for that reason. Um, but in terms of like spawning position, to be real honest with you, I don't. I haven't studied it enough. To me, every single position is tough. Um, Got it. Okay. Yeah. Like turret wise, uh, I guess I like. I don't like twelve. For some reason, I don't like twelve. But you, but you're a Terran one on one player. W w what do you think is the best spawn uh, for Terran? I think yeah, the best spawn is when you spawn close to your allies, so that yeah, you get more yeah, yeah. Like, better answer. That's better what I'm answer. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what I like. It's like when we're getting into the minutia of like which spawns better turret placements, I'm like yeah. yeah, that matters. But what I really care about is like, do they spawn in my base? You know. Are you sure you don't play two versus two, buddy? You you think like a two versus two? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I. It's all Starcraft, really. It's all the fundamentals. Yeah, right. So you're going bio here. Uh, that's standard against ZP. Like, it's kind of difficult to squeeze out mech because you just give up so much map control uh, while you're going for that, right? Yeah, I mean, I like I like bio against ZP. I just like vessels. I like vessels. Yeah. I'm a big vessel guy. I think vessels have good casting abilities against both Zerg and Protoss. Exactly. They're really good because they're good against the Mutalisks. Yeah. And if it goes to late game, they're good against the Templar too. Yeah. Whereas if you're going mech, it's like Goliaths are okay against Zerg, but kind of trash against Protoss, right? Exactly. And Tant is kind of trash against the uh, against the Zerg. So. Yeah. Uh, and we got the two v one attempt here. Something about to finish for um, Rancor. Oh, he's got one in the back too, so he should... If he can block these links from getting in, he should be okay. Yeah, really good drone game. Here. For good patience. A lot of and, overwhelming numbers here. Yeah, whenever you can absorb attack 1v2, and you don't even need help to survive, that's like such a chat move actually, and uh, yep. uh, you yep. get really ahead by doing that, so... Uh, I mean, we've got a turn here, uh, a certain player named Jiraiya who should be having Stim. Okay, yeah, that, that's the photon cannon that, they, <laughs> that I was talking about, so... Um, yeah, Stim should be Oh yeah, you're, right you're gonna see photon cannons this game. So this is where you're gonna see a lot of those, like, probes being sent to the Zerg, sending, uh, making pylons and cannons while Zerg makes a lighter. You see that more standardly uh, in DP versus ZT. Right, yeah, so pretty good scram, actually, I have to say, from the left team, where, like, you attack the enemy Zerg, so he has to make Sunkins, so you get a tech advantage. Because if you get Mutalisks first, you could possibly kill the enemy Zerg. And then, you know that your Zerg is going to be weak from that, so you just get a cannon to compensate. Exactly. You know, like the classic cannon into faster take strategy. Yep. Uh, yep. So, you're going to have to deal with Mutalisks eventually. And I mean, you do have Marine Medic, you could theoretically defend your ally, but then he could just send his Mutalisks to you, and they do spawn back in your base, so... Yeah. Yeah, so my mindset here is probably uh, my ally just got pretty 
heavily harassed. Um, mutas are about to pop any second. There's not much I could do in terms of killing and ending the game, but maybe I can go give some support to my ally against those mutas to allow them to continue to drone. I try to make a third rack to continue the production here. Because my ally is going to be struck on making drones for a while, I want to have presence on the map as well as defense against early muta pressure. So electing to be more macro focused and getting more units. Yeah, I think you have to because the photon cannons on the ramp are just way too strong against Valiant. There's no way you can kill anyone. Yeah. So you have to macro at this point. And uh, I'm expecting, like, it, the one thing you're going for you though is that at least it's one hatch muta, which means the amount of turrets you have here should be enough. Yep. But where do you go from here? Like, do you actually try to expand or? Um, no, to me, like expanding to me in this spot is not applicable because it's just going to make me too thin. I'm already sending yeah, you know, yeah. a designated group to my ally. I'm trying to support the coverage in my mineral line here. Yeah, you probably need the vessels first. Yeah. To just shovel yeah. in this. Yeah. And then, of course, you have a Progloss. I mean, Progloss has built a lot of cannons, so he slowed himself down, but eventually he's got to get running too. Uh, well, okay, Muta is dying there, so that's pretty sweet. Some drunken Muta is there. So this guy, Pro Ball, he, he's also an old school tourist tour, very good. Um, uh, sometimes he can get nervous in these spots. <laughs> that might be one of those <laughs> moments. But uh, but yeah, he does a good job. I respect his Muta Micro. He does a really good job um, harassing just in general. So I add that second turret. I make a third turret, really respecting his ability to, to harass me. Right now, my mindset is just continue to make units, get up the vessel, don't take harassment, and focus your mutas. I mean, your your bio at your ally as well, just in case those mutas decide to pivot. Oh, this but here, move, actually. yeah. Uh, I mean, I think you should be able to hold this because it slows adults. You yeah, okay. So I mean, the terrain that's that's pretty good. Um, you do hold. I think if Animal's going to expand right now, it has to be uh, the left team. It has to be um, uh, Provo and, and Leidig because they do have so much map control with the Marine, uh, the Mutalisks. Where it's like, if you ever try to go kill the expansion, he could counterattack either right. your base or your allies' base because, you know, he's only out there. I mean, he's got some supports now, but he's only out there for a while and watch those pumpkins. Right. Yeah, so that early pressure to me, um, I was able to hold it a lot more comfortably because I went for the three rack, I had the production, um, and now my ally is up to 17 drones, right? So he's back in the game, he still has my initial group of MM, We're, we repel this attack here, he's making an Aspire, so, um, so we definitely uh, did a good job droning up and getting back into this game. Yeah, and we have to also keep in mind that this is a Zuri expansion on the way, not a Protoss expansion. So it's actually not as scary as you might think, especially when Zuri is just going to us, which of course they do 90% of the time in 2v2. Right. Uh, because you have a Stormport on the way, and the Stormport, uh, it kind of rates Mutalisks because they can, you know, if you get to that point. So uh, the Reaver Rock, though, oh yeah. So obviously the, the classic cannon into fast take. Uh, this could have gone much worse. Actually, I don't know why he's pulling back. He's waiting for a second reaver, maybe. Because we have like five marines only, uh, two reavers. Yeah, so this could be really scary with the double reaver coming in. Only a few marines to defend. More yeah, I, I agree. They they probably <clears throat> they probably could have softened up those edges a little bit more, but it looks like they're gonna go for it again here. Coming in with the meteorlisks. Okay, I don't a little bit indecisive maybe, like they have the cannons against the counterattack, so they don't really have to fear. He's gonna go for you instead now. Interesting choice. Uh Reavers of course dominate bio and you're basically on your own. Because uh Rancor has some yeah, it's yeah, so, so I guess that's a valid choice too. Actually interesting to, to punch your as if you're threatening the zone. Uh, provoke Terran to move out and then attack the Terran. Uh, not a bad choice actually. Yeah, that definitely was a good choice by that. I'm killing my entire army. I have nothing but a handful of marines left. Um, tough spot here. So yeah, Dragoon Reaver. Kind of a classic 2v2 call but, to uh, go for. It's worth noting, my ally has mutas. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was just about to say, like, uh, Ryan's mutas should be coming up any second now, and you can go Dragoon Weaver 
if your Zerg ally can help with the anti-air. But Proball uh, getting a little bit over eager, attacking and not defending his ally, so that's a lot of probes dying for, um, for Lady. And okay, if if he, <laughs> if um if Ragnar can win the air battle here, uh, you could save this. You haven't taken any ACB damage yet, so if you clear this up, you're in fine spot actually. You're just coming in, taking out the Weaver, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty sick. I can't tell who has more Mutas though. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so hard to see. <laughs> I think Proball is uh, preemptively getting ready to split against Vessels, but little does he know, the Vessel's not out yet, so... Okay, definitely more Mutas from Proball. Yeah, definitely. Um, what do you think about like turning around and going for the drone line of Ranker right now, immediately? Yeah, and the, and the Marines can sort of cut them off. Definitely, that could be a play. Uh, I think the confidence level in my allies, these marines are not attacking. I remember in this spot I was like spazzing out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Interesting micro, you gotta like, like the, the team melee micro, where, like you gotta yeah. synchronize with your ally, because like either one of you would lose alone, so you have to kind of synchronize the anti beta micro yeah. at the same time. But I think you have enough marines now where you could survive on your own. Yeah. Maybe? Uh, it's on the edge, kind of see. Um, no. No, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Probably an overstep here from Proval. Um... Okay, he's counting. Oh, this is so good, dude. Classic CVC style. When yeah. the mutas aren't at home, you snipe the expo. And he's got more mutas at this point, so a little bit of an overstep there. I think. I really think like he could have turned around and went for the drones because everything was to the left. So if you're getting chased by an inferior mutas account, because, you know, he didn't have as many. Uh, there's really nothing you can do to like there were barely any marines left in uh, random space, right? After that first or, attack. Or so. he or he can just do this and just go Protoss and, and snipe him, knowing that he's got the air superiority. I, I got a vessel here just in case to kind of back him up against any mutas that would come support. Uh, but here, Proball, knowing he's kind of out of position, he needs to make something happen. But yeah, I think Proball's getting outmaneuvered by Ranker. Um, yeah. Ranker's mutas can always uncertainty in finding better spots to be in. Oh, this is pretty sick, too. I gotta say, Ranker took a beating early, but he really came back later in this game. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and I think um, the, the the response that he... All of his reaction to them putting so much pressure on me is, is what probably got us to win this. Win this. Call of Duty is sick of it. So now, again, Ranker's Mutalisks okay. should be able to clean up um, put yeah. off Mutalisks and oh, yeah. uh, the Reavers, too. So you're running away with some, some SCDs. Like, the more SCDs you can save here, the better. And you're not really losing too many, it looks like, so... Yeah, just perfect, perfect play from Rancor there. Dude, okay. The Photon Cannon into Fast Textile, it almost worked. And they had a few chances to win with it. <laughs> but, I don't know, they just got off maneuvered tactically, like... No, being... I, I agree with you, they should have been more decisive with that first Reaver. They, they could have got a lot more done, I think. It was only five Marines, but... Well, I always yeah. say that, like, great players steal games. Like, when you're playing a good player and you get ahead, they still somehow manage to win. You know what I mean? Like, have you ever played against, like, a pro gamer? And you're like, okay, this is my chance. But they just make you, like, <laughs> they just make you play worse, you know? And yeah. they stick to the money. Yeah, that's the trauma that I was speaking to before. And, and the player was not a pro, but still Bonnet. Uh, Bonnet does that to me all the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, so you know what I mean. Yeah. That was sick game, dude. I hope... Uh, Let's see what happens again, too. You're ready to go for it. All right, let's get into it. All right, so no more Python S shenanigans with the close air. We have a uh, good old fighting spirit. And looks like we got, okay, Proval and Leydig are, yeah, we got Leydig up at the top right. Protoss and his ally Proball is at the top left. So we got top versus bottom, Zerg Protoss versus I imagine Zerg Terran from the enemy. So this is Ranker at the left, as the Zerg, bottom left. And yeah, uh, IRK dash I Mitirea as the Orange Terran at the bottom left. So ZTZP, um, basically like the two standard teams against each other, right? Because like ZP is one of the standard teams and ZT is the other standard, right? Yeah, this is probably the most typical or standard matchup, 2 versus 2. 
CT versus EP. So overall, considered like basically a five-five matchup, I have to imagine uh, between these two configurations, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say so. Um, <clears throat> probably the most fun to to watch and cast, um, in my opinion, because uh, it's so dynamic. Um, but one of the tougher, uh, tougher matchups. It's a lot of. A lot of things this turn that you gotta do against Protoss, right? Like last game didn't really get there, but like, you know, vessels, you gotta radiate, you gotta EMP, you gotta do a lot of things with your with your bio. Yeah, spreading them against the uh, scarabs and or storm. Yeah, yeah, high templars, reavers, not my friends. Um, that's why <clears throat> that's why I have a Zerg ally. I really you know, my playstyle against EP is really just team play. I I wanna do something about the mutas, I want to do something about the anti-muta stuff like DA, things like that, and I want my ally with his mutas to to kill my enemies, high templars, reavers, etc. Um, yes. So we do have a two gate starting off from uh, uh, the top team, Lay and Pro. Now this doesn't quite tell us yet what they're going for. We also have a nine pool. Uh, should be speed or or uh, yeah, nine pool speed. There we go. So, 9 full speed, is that like an aggressive opener? Do you think they're gonna go for like 2 get mass out plus speed? Yeah, 9 full speed means I want to take control of this game early, and yeah. if I see an opening, I'm gonna take it because I'm getting link speed. So, in this case, uh, Lei is scouting out the, the build of my ally with his probe. He sees that my ally went for an overpull and went for a delayed gas, which means his speed is gonna be delayed. Yeah. Um, and he can't really get a sunken in time for this, so this creates a 2v1 timing, for sure. Yeah, yeah, but one-on-one, -on -one, ZBZ, my ally, has the numbers. What what makes it complicated is when Z-Lots are into play. So right. here, Lei is starting to shift down towards um, my ally. The first Z-Lot is going to be there momentarily. So once speed does kick in and that first Z-Lot enters this sort of terrain, um, that's where sort of the action starts. But right now, the action is already uh, starting, and my ally is trading well here one-on-one, -on -one, but... Oh, oh no, he let him in. He let him no, in. No, okay, not quite, no. But here comes the Zelot, there's no sunk in it. So we do see some Marines coming out. But like, Talon before spin, like, Marines are kind of bad. Like, they just kind of die to everything. Uh, right. But you still have to do something, you still have to, to try to help your ally. Yeah. Uh, do you think you should have made a sunk in, like, at the edge before the second hatch? You think that would have been a good idea? Um, you don't have to. I think <clears throat> uh, trading one for one, basically. Sunken will come up. Losing a drone here in the mineral line, not the worst situation here. Still haven't punched speed, so speed, there's no follow up really. Uh, so the idea is just to survive. I'm trying to send some yeah. marine here. There's going to be a huge power spike when you get stinned. Uh, you're going to have uncontested map control, and Protoss might have to can up again just to survive. Uh, and one marine, two marine team on the ramp is huge. Now he's basically safe forever, I have to imagine. Uh, it's gonna be hard to 2v1 now with that sunk in the back too. They're still trying, but... I don't know, but one way to carry games in 2v2 is actually to absorb attacks. I don't know if he's gonna be able to absorb this though. Oh, this is Zelot still in rank oh, course me. Oh, they breached the sunken. Damn, I can't believe this is working actually. <laughs> Damn, they just really rammed it in. Yeah, I, this is a result of one-to-one -one trading. Um, when you're my ally in this spot and you're trading one for one against the nine pool, then once that Zilog gets there, yeah. you have nothing else to exchange. Yeah, so and then he's already got speed, Mordlings will come. It just becomes an unfavorable just numbers game at that point. So when you're on top of the map, you, you obviously, not map, when you're on top of the ramp, you obviously have an advantage, advantageous position. You want to trade better than one to one. Yeah, exactly. You want to trade. You want to trade better than that. Then you can afford not to make that early sunken. But GG. Right. So even by doing a build that was like on the edge of micro, right? Where yeah. what you have to do is like it's kind of hard actually. But I want to explain the micro here, where you yeah. want to stand on top of the ramp so that one more of your links can attack against it. So it's like four on three or something like that. Yeah. But it's a very precise spot to stand in to get that to work. So it, it isn't easy. Yeah, ideally you want to have like against zerglings, you want to get two to one. So if you get you, you want to get two attack, uh, two zerglings attacking one zergling. It's hard to do that obviously for each situation, but you want to make your arc so that you're you're having those types of exchanges. Yeah. Your goal is to get two to one. 
um, against Zealots, the goal is you want to have three Zerglings attacking a Zealot. Uh, those are like the favorable numbers, and then if you can have that perfect concave above your ramp to do that, then it's like, okay, I have all these Lings being reinforced, I'm holding this line, my second hatchery is up, now let's make our Sunken. Um, but it takes a lot of micromanagement to, to get to that sort of sweet spot where you're holding and you're able to get that sunken uh, without having to, to make it too early. Yeah, and there's also micro for the enemy trying to go up the ramp. Like, if right. you're good at maintaining formation, then it's not actually physically possible to do two to one. The best you could get is like four to three, or even three to three sometimes, if right. depending. Yeah, yeah. So. So at this level, these guys all very high level that you're going to see a lot of that sort of maneuvering, repositioning types of things on the ramp. And uh, it's always fun to see. All right, so match points for the set. Let's go into the last one. All right, so it's worth noting, uh, losers of this match go home. Uh, they're out of the tournament. This is a losers bracket match. So all marbles on the table for this one. Okay, Paradiso again, which is essentially a Dauntless re uh, Peak remake. And, right, uh, right. We have Probo as the top left turn. His teammate Leidig is uh, to the left, so it's left versus right. So Probo to the left. And then we got, of course, um, Renger, so Zerg, at the bottom right, and uh, a certain Jiraiya at the top left. And, yeah, top right. So, Terran Zurich, non cross spawns. Now, do you prefer uh, close spawns with your ally or cross spawn with your ally as Terran Zurich? Close spawn, because I want to have the option to help him or break right. him. Uh, whereas cross map, I feel like I don't have a choice where I need him to survive and I need to maybe try to exploit a counter. But it plays more counter versus help. So I always want to be closer to my ally yeah. to be able to support him. That's always my preference. Yeah, so the, I mean, that early, like... I mean, Terran is weak early before the power spike of either the first Vulture or uh, Spin, yep. depending on the matchup. And uh, that just gets exploited even harder when it's cross map. I have to imagine, uh, with, with yeah. the early mobility, uh, the counter attacks and stuff like that. For sure, for sure. So again, Probal going for an earlier gas, and uh, Ranter going for hatch first. So was that an 11 hatch right there? Yep, yep, 11 hatch yeah. in base. Which is a little bit safer than 12 hatch, of course, and it's not on the ramp or anything, so this is the safest way to go hatch first, unless you're going 9 hatch. But 9 hatch is like a crazy speedling uh, spam all in. This is more of um, almost blocking that word, are you checking? Yeah, that would have been big to block that. Um, every second that you delay that, that that pool is a big, big delay because obviously he went hatch first. But the mindset here that Rancor and I had was, let's get these guys to mid game and let's drown them into the late game kind of situation. Let's win mid game, and if it gets to late game, let's win it late game. But let's get to mid game kind of kind of mindset. So yeah. that's why we went for the super sort of safe build here because my ally is spawned below me. No matter what they do, whether they go all in or, or what have you to put that aggression to my ally. Because he's so close to me, I can help him too. So that that was our mindset. Let, let, let's let's win this mid game. Right now, an eleven hatch two v one. I mean, it's going to be rough for sure, but it's definitely doable, especially because it's not on the ramp, right? So they're not right. even going to go for it. Actually, they're switching to go to you. But uh, you have a, a link. Isn't that a link type wall? It's looking like it. I'm not sure. The left side of that barrack, believe it or not, it's so funny to me because usually a marine is a good test because it's the same yeah, size. Yeah, it's one of those. Point. Yeah, but yeah. a marine can't get in, but zerglings can. But it's tricky because you have to almost micro pivot. I know, yeah, but this yeah, is still a good wall because it's still only one leg at a time. So even yeah. this, even though it's not totally tight, it's a very safe. Yes, um, and we already have sunken. So really, the only advantage that the left side has, um, a probal and lady, has to be like the faster tank. Like they're gonna have mutas first, basically. Right. Now, other than that, I, I think you're getting away with uh, a more economic opening here. Yeah, if they're making as many units as they are, they kind of have to do something with it. Oh, so they want a cannon contain? Is that what this is? Looks to be it. Um, when when they don't have full vision on Rancor, they're kind of in the unknown, but... Um, with but why would you make a cannon here? I mean, clearly, Rancor's not going to expand at this point, so why would you want um, to go well, for a cannon? 
It's a good question. Uh, that that wall does very well against Zerglings. Oh yeah, okay. I, I guess so. So um, it's basically containing the Zerglings exactly. for like complete and utter map control. Yeah, right. Uh, and then behind that, maybe you expand, or I'm not sure what plan is, but um, oh yeah, okay, I get what they're doing actually. Because the thing is, like, you know, your opponent Zerg doesn't have tech; he only has links. So if the only thing he has is Zerglings, and you can contain that. Uh, well, then you're putting him out of the game for a long time. Exactly. Exactly. So that's that's why the can contain it actually makes some sense. Yeah, and, and it's worth noting we don't know that they're doing that. Like, yeah, we literally yeah, don't it, know yeah. that they're doing that until like this moment right here. Yeah, when he tries to break out. So he's exactly. just like, oh, yeah, I have so many links. Like, this is my advantage. I got two match against one. I make exactly. links. And then it's like, oh, snap. I can't do another. Yep. Yeah, because even if there were like six zealots there and no cannon, you're, you're just thinking, okay, I'm just going to drone drill that and I'm going to break right, out exactly. my mass lanes. But for there to be cannons there too, it's like, uh, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> and at this point, I don't think you can even break him out because you're going to get 2v1. Exactly. And the cannons are there and. Yeah. Yeah, so here, Lay just continuing to make zealots. He's getting his tech up here as well. But yeah, you got to think. Zerglings and Zealots are out there somewhere because you're not going to use all that to contain oh, you know, wow. your link. Oh, yeah, that's it, cocky, dude. yeah I, I think they just want to confirm the number of Zealots. Right, um, yeah, yeah. And see what the layer timing is. Yeah, um, he, really, yeah. he would love to see uh, whether there's a layer on the way or not, but he's not going to be able to, though. But what I'm really scared for of um, is like a Reaver plus a Mutalisk 2v1 on either one of you right now because you're well, so isolated. Well, yeah, it, you know, the game might get there, but what I'm thinking about this spot is I don't want to lose all of my army to what's out there. Right now, we're in unknown. So oh, yeah, you can not go it, Yeah, one of the things that I stress as a Terran for my Zerg ally is to find out what's going on on the map. But when you're oh, an ally... That's sweet, actually. That's yeah, that was a good OV pull there. But right now, I'm very worried about what's out there, so that's why I'm kind of gingerly moving around. I'm not on 3-rack, I'm only on 2-rack, so... Uh, I am worried about what's out there, and I don't want to. If I lose my army, we're, we lose this game. So yeah, for sure. Um, and you, you, there's no way for you to scout anything. Like it could right. be DT, it could and be they, rear. And the other thing too is they can just go attack my ally here as well, and my ally needs yeah. to be prepared for it too. So it's kind of a fine balance of getting up to tech, but also having enough stuff so neither of us just die to an A move because <laughs> we don't know what's going on and um, that's not typically how you want to play two versus two but the way that our build was and their response to it it was a smart decision by them to do what they did and, and, and we need to as a result be cautious here yeah for sure I mean the, the decision to expand I think is good uh, because that is a way to exploit uh, you know the containment of the enemies uh, they went through mutalisks you know, they, they have a cannon contain, and uh, uh, we do see that uh, the, the expansion at the mid left from yep. um, uh, from from the Zerg. So, but yeah, I mean, you've got to be like, you can't really scan because it could be DTs, and then you're giving up all map control forever if you blow your scans. I did scan Protoss uh, like 15 seconds ago just to kind of see what his tech was. So I know that there's a lot of Zealots, and I know the the Templar Archives is delayed. We saw, we saw the Citadel. So, because we knew that there were a lot of zealots out, I figured he'd get the leg like, speed. Um, so right now, I'm just thinking, I don't want to get backstabbed in my main by Muto, so I want to have enough stuff there. And I don't want to breach, I don't want to have my wall breach. So I kind of have my army next to each other, but also positioned so that if I get hit from either side, I can, I can maneuver. Yeah. But again, I'm not confident until I have the equalizer, which is the vessel. Once I have a vessel, then I could, I feel like I can fight. Yeah, because then you can evade it, and Immuta's coming in, and you're not going to die to any DTs. This is sick, though. Uh, okay, you barely get the map, that's huge. Barely. I barely. mean, that could have been death right there. Barely. So that, that's exactly what they were looking for, and exactly what I was afraid of. Which is why I had my army the way that, that it was, but... Uh, but yeah, that can that can end the game right there, if you're, if you're caught with your pants down. Yeah, I think you were caught, like... With them a little bit down, but not the whole way, so you, you managed to... Uh, to, to pull the pants up and, and stop peeing just in time. Yes, yes. I realized I was in a public space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that police officer was like, yeah, can I help you? Uh -oh. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so finally, you're going to be a person to meet us of your own. Yep. 
uh, uh, Ranker is going to be uh, finally taking the mutas and breaking out there. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we got strange. expansions from both opponents, so that's a little scary. Yeah, it's kind of a strange situation, but it's kind. Of, you ever heard of the Korean term uh, hambang? Yeah, I know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like you only have that like timing, that timing attack. This is kind of what that is. Because uh, we're both, it's kind of like a no rush 10 minute game, right? Like, we really haven't done anything. They kind of did some stuff, but really haven't done anything either. Uh, so now we're kind of both swollen up, right, with our units and our tech. And, and now we're trying to show our swollenness. <laughs> yeah, we got everybody expanding, except, of course, for Vanguard, who's cannon containing. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be like, difficult to ever solve, because, I mean,. Like, you're, you're not going to get a tank with speech mode. I mean, that's that's not even... It's not really yeah. at this point, right? Yeah, like, I'm not trying to kill the, the cannons. My ally has mutas now, so he's not contained anymore. But there are DAs, um, which we saw. Yeah. Oh, dude. Okay, forcing the Archon. Only one cannon here, so a little bit scary since the Dark Archons aren't ready yet. Uh, they don't have energy and they don't have mainstream yet to use. Uh, I wonder if you have a way at this point. Yes, big Eureka goes down, gotta split those. Decent split, but yeah, I mean, there needed to be more cannons here. For sure, to defend this. In fact, you might even go up the ramp. This is actually the game. Okay, here comes the, uh, he's got mainstream at this point. There we go, big mainstream. Alright, so we're gonna clear it up, but, uh, that's a dead expansion at least. And you have yours. That's a lot of useless links with plus one even. But uh, you're kind of up a base now. I mean, Zerg only has Mutas. You're SK Terran at this point. You don't fear that. They need a progress to get that expo. Because I think Zerg having an expo, it's just not as big of a deal as it would have been if progress had. So that timing working was a big deal. Do you think maybe they should have made a fewer fewer cannons for the containment and more cannons to defend the expo? I, th I think they needed Maelstrom against those biomes. Uh, it's a little bit earlier, yeah. Yeah, because he had two DAs. His his intent there is to Maelstrom my bio and surround it with Zealots and, and Mutos and just isolate and collapse. Nice. But I think we that E Hall timing for another Korean term. Young yeah. yeah. Really needed that. Yeah. Yeah, so now my ally broke out by himself. He's got all of those units. Now he's yeah, just he had too many mutilists, yeah. yeah. I mean, the so... enemy Zerg lost uh, so many problem. This is Zerg, right? He lost so many um, uh, mutilists that yeah. uh, Rancor didn't have to fear anything in it. So he could just go, go break it out. Right. So. Yeah, that's why I like Vessel so much. I'm a big Vessel guy. But he... <clears throat> yeah, that's a great feedback from, from Lei. Yeah, but it's just... <sighs> Damn, that's a lot of things to do. That was a close last game, I gotta say. That one time, yeah. I mean, this would be a very different game if that expansion had been. Yeah, a totally different game. That's why we prioritize going Protoss there. GG. Welcome by. Yeah, don't let Protoss grow out of control in 2v2. Exactly. It's actually disgusting, guys, if you haven't seen it. <laughs>